going to say I... Hey, welcome to Big Yak or Fishing. Uh, this is a, just this video, I'm going to show you um, how my kayak is laid out when I go out fishing in Chesapeake Bay. Um, this layout here that, you, that I'm gonna show you uh, can be used in any body of water, really. Um, nothing really changes when I go, whether it's in the ocean, whether I go in the Chesapeake Bay, and then uh, more recently, I'm gonna be going hitting the streams and the rivers I'm in a fishing tournament for the CCA of Maryland. Uh, it's a pickerel tournament, so I figured I'd give, a, give that a try. I've never done it before. Probably caught one pickerel in my entire life. So, um, you know, if I don't catch anything, at least the money goes to a good cause. So, um, I will give you a description from bow to stern of all the equipment. A link to the equipment will be in the description of the video. So, if you have any additional questions after you've done your research or you just want to send me a comment, I can, ask, I can answer any questions you may have on any of the equipment or the layout of the actual kayak. Um, so, uh, please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up button. And uh, also, if you have not already, please subscribe to the channel. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, and again, leave a comment. All right. So starting off with the bow of my kayak, I have the, uh, the Reliable Fishing Products bag. Uh, this, this ice bag is really for fish. Um, again, here in the bay, I can only catch one striped bass and keep it. <clears throat> but if you want to put a bunch of perch in there, a bunch of crappie or anything else that you catch, you can definitely put it in there. It holds ice. I've been out on the water in a hot day for, uh, I'd probably say about four hours. To actually max of like six hours and still had ice in the in the cooler when I was done so I mount this on the front of my kayak as you can see um, I actually had to put the eyelets in right there if you can see them I had to put the eyelets in and then um, attach the rings here um, to make it stay I only put them right here so my feet uh, push up enough so my feet don't hit it with the paddles uh, or the pedals so it's been really good for me I uh, never had any problems with it or anything like that or water coming over the top it doesn't really matter in rough seas it doesn't add that much extra weight but like I said um, it's a pretty good product so uh, let me take this off and I'll show you the hatch area uh, hatch the Hobie hatch here Ugh. I don't usually keep anything in here other than dry goods this gets wet um, it did come with about a actually I did purchase a I think it's a $60 bucket that goes in here but even if you have that bucket in here it gets wet fills up with water so um, I opted not to use the bucket. It, when you use the bucket, actually, I wouldn't even recommend buying it. It's a waste of money um, because when you try to close the hatch, the bucket actually stops it from closing and getting an even better, uh, getting a better seal. The seal's not that great to begin with, even though you have the rubber around the edges. It still does, still leaks um, around in here. When you get water over the bow, um, it'll it will leak on you and get a little wet in there. This is my rain gear, so I don't mind putting that in here. Um, if it gets wet, that's fine. And I also have a dry bag. So anything I don't want wet, I'll put a dry bag and put it in here. It's still good storage. Plenty of room in there. Plenty of room. Um, and I'll show you later how you, some people put the battery. There's a battery holder you can get that mounts to this. And you can put that in here if you want to have your battery up front. Mine's in a different location. So I'll show you where that is. And that's actually one of the, probably the best ideas I got from the internet was where I have the battery at now. So close that. All right. So here we have the um, pedal drive, which if you're familiar with Hobie kayaks, that's what we, that's what they use, right? So um, one thing that saved me a lot of money, because the pedal drive itself, this whole pedal drive right here is worth about, I'd looked online, it's worth about five, $600, um, sometimes even more. Um, during COVID, I think it even went up in price because they're hard to get. So very expensive, so you don't want to lose it. So if you flip in the water, obviously you want to have, have it tethered to your kayak. I actually rolled it, not uh, launching in the ocean, I rolled it. Um, and it fell out and luckily I didn't lose the drive because I had this tether here I had to install and again had to install the eyelet So you are having to drill into your kayak, uh, but again you take it on take it off um, pretty easy, so um, That's for the uh, That's a good tether a good use is about $30 at tether uh, Definitely a good use of money saves you a lot of money there. So you don't lose your lose your gear. So um, 
over here um, I did I do have some additional eyelets here if you see have one there have one right down here below my low rants um, and that's basically because I use the um, this trolling device now this this here um, I only have one on today and that's usually how I go out is only put one on there so when I have um, when you get a pedal kayak uh, with you know a, a Hobie or whatever you get um, you don't realize how much you actually will troll so because your hands are free right so you can just put them put them in the rod holders and, and troll um while you're going so it's it's real nice and so this keeps the rod lower to the water um and it gives you a good view out of both sides now you could put your rod here into here sticking up and troll that way but then you have to look up to see if you're you got a bite right so this way is a lot easier to see and um Again, you have to put these on here um, to stop the, because if these aren't on, actually. Let me see, the other side here. So I loosen these up a little. Uh, so if you don't, if that's not on basically when you're trolling and you get a bite, you're gonna go like this and you could potentially lose your rod so um, you got to make sure you, you insert those correctly and get those on both sides so it doesn't go either way um, but I found these to be very useful uh, very easy to use uh, very easy to take your rod in and out um, we have the bending branches paddle um, although this is a pedal kayak um, you definitely need um, a paddle because when you launch you can't put the put the rudders in I'm sorry the, the pedals in the foot pedals in if you're too shallow so you got to um, put those in as you're getting deeper water when you put the fit when you put the rudder down as well So I got the bending branches paddle this kayak actually came with a Hobie paddle But uh, as you can expect the paddle was very cheap and chintzy because they don't really you're not going to use it that much Right, so it was cheap and chintzy and it was a little bit too short for me. I think the width of this is at least 36 um, inches maybe um, again, that'll be in the description, but um so I end up getting a bigger, longer paddle. Um, this paddle, the Bending Branches paddle, they do go by millimeters here. So I think mine is actually, I think it might be 260 millimeters or somewhere around there. Um, I found that to be the longest. It talks about the paddler height here. Um, you know, if you're six foot plus, which is me, right? So then you want to get any of those and then it gives you the kayak width. So kayaks pretty, pretty wide. So I went with the, as big as I can get. I had to order it online. Um, it's only about a hundred bucks though. So the paddle wasn't that terribly expensive uh, but I like the paddle and it works well pretty sturdy so that's the paddle that I use um, um, inside uh, both sides we have this this web this nice mesh uh, webbing to store things um, uh, when you're using when you're trolling actually I have this tether um, and this hooks to the actual rod so it, if the rod gets loose or whatever it doesn't fall in the water and, and, and it stays in here so I'll just store that in there when I'm not using it uh, I use this for my phone, um, and then I set my phone right here on this on this cup thing here. I love these. They have them down here. They have them right here, um, and you can store lures there all day long. They don't fall out. I love I love that feature. Um, the new Hobies. I'm not actually a fan. This is a 2018. Um, I have my brother-in-law has a 2019 and or 20, and um, they're beautiful kayaks. But I just like this feature. Like this is this really sells it for me. Um, and not to mention, I'm a bigger guy, and this kayak you sit lower in. Like this is a lot lower. Um, you sit lower in the kayak overall. Um, the newer kayaks, the newer Hobies, are kind of kind of wider and they're also up high the decks up higher you're like you're, you're really sitting up high in the water and they're great for that and and they're much lighter and you can go a lot faster and probably more energy efficient but i just like this layout and this setup for um the 2018 there's two on both sides you have one of these on both sides in the front um where you can put your poles and that's you know again if i'm going out i'm not going to use the trolling obviously when i go out fishing in rivers and streams right so um this will be empty when I go out tomorrow to try to get some of them pickerel. Um, this kayak actually came with the circular hatch and I ended up um, installing this myself. So pretty easy to do. Um, just make sure you put sealant around so it doesn't leak. Um, make sure you have screws and I use the nuts with that as well because uh, it gives a better seal and I definitely recommend that. So inside here, I have uh, basically I have up here this little uh, little thing here where you can I usually put my keys and my wallet in here um, and then here's my license obviously for the for Maryland uh, I keep that in there at all times never get rid of that uh, I do recommend so I did get a little mold here 
recommend when you're storing your kayak, I'll store mine upside down, recommend keeping this open so it airs out. And then if it airs out, um, you know, cause it gets a little humid in there, uh, it definitely won't get that mold. So it's kind of gotten better already from just being open the last time I stored it. So this is all where I keep all my, you know, soft plastics, um, any extra hooks, bait, um, your fake bait, lures, bobbers, uh, other tackle. I'll just keep that in there for easy access. I'll store my GoPro in there when I'm not using it because uh, this will definitely stay dry. This this uh, under here may get a little wet from the front, but um, this, this stays very dry. Uh, you can take this out if you want. Do with one hand here. There you go. So again, you have your um, inside here underneath you can store some extra stuff um, there were times I was putting my tackle box in here but stuff slides around too much and then it's hard to get to so um, but that's you know you have a lot of storage in this kayak for sure if you're going on long trips or anything like that so uh, that's that and again this was the upgrade I'll have a link in the description to um, to what I got where I got that and how much I paid for that it, again Hobie products aren't cheap they're kind of expensive so um, okay now we have the um, the Hobie seat, nothing special here. This is the life jacket I use, kind of an older life jacket. Um, you notice I do have a marine radio with me at all times. Uh, probably not when I go on the, the lakes and rivers and whatnot, but definitely out in the Chesapeake Bay, I always have this. Um, inside here, um, sometimes I'll put my phone or this, you see this uh, yellow thing in there, uh, orange thing, that's actually a, a safety whistle. Um, I didn't get any good video, but I was out in the fog one time and I had that in my mouth. I never had to use it, but I had it in my mouth ready to go, just in case. Um, there's a thing here to put a knife to. Uh, recommend you get one of those uh, with all the stuff that we have that we, um, you know, you keep tethered to the, to the kayak. You may want to have a knife available, okay? So um, again, safety always. I always wear this. I never go in my kayak without it. So I will always wear my life vest. The Hobie tires, these are great for the sand. And as you can see, this is where you store them when you're in the water. So obviously they just go underneath the kayak and go underneath and in there and you can just pull it on sand or cement or anything else. Um, I love these. I also have the Sea Tug uh, Sea Tug wheels, but I can't stand them um, because they slide off my kayak all the time when I'm pulling it. Um, I got them for my wife, and they work well for her kayak. It's a lot lighter, but um, I wouldn't recommend the Sea Tugs. They're they're good, but um, and they go over terrain really well. But again, they're just a pain in the neck. And then when you get in the water, you have to take them apart and then you put them in your in your dry hatch or your hatch up front if you wanted to. So. All right, so this is my crate. I always have my crate here. Um, it just depends on what's in it, obviously. This is set up for when I go out on the, the rivers and lakes. I'm not gonna need that much stuff. I uh, usually have about three tackle boxes in there, um, but I only got the one. And then I have my ruler so I can measure the, uh, if I get lucky enough to catch any fish, I can measure them and take a picture. Um, this has a little side compartment. Um, right now it's got a headlamp in there, um, but usually I'll put some other uh, lures that I'm gonna use that day. I'll, I'll shove those in there as well. So um, I got this, again, it's a Yak Attack crate, I think. Uh, link will be in the description. Um, with that, I, I have the Hobie flag here. Um, again, safety, always safety. As they say, safety sexy. So um, make sure that you um, have something that I, where people can see you out on the water because this kayak does sit a little bit low. If you look at it, it kind of sits low in the back. So, and again, I have my net here. Uh, these are also two rod holders, by the way. So you could put more rods in here. This, this kayak, the way I have it set up, could hold a total of uh, six rods. So if that's something that you want to really do, get all those rods in there, good luck. Um, but yeah, so you can use it for a rod holder or like I said, I use it for my net and I use it for my flag and I always have my flag up. And then this flag also has a light on it. Um, all you do is you twist it and then the light comes on. Again, you won't see it in the daytime, but it's very, very good uh, early mornings or late evenings. You can, you'll, you'll be seen. So, okay, moving to the back. Um, we have the, this is, this came with, I bought, I didn't have to buy it. It came with the upgraded rudder, the sailing rudder. Um, being a big guy like me, it makes you turn on a dime really. So that's really, really nice. I enjoy that. <coughs> That's a, that's a good upgrade that, that it came with. Okay, so this was, um, I got this idea from Robert Fields. Um, he's big into kayak fishing, obviously, and he did a demo of how he had his kayak set up. So before I mentioned, I had the battery up front. So here, since I never use the back, this hatch really, you really can't do much with it. If you're on the water, you're not gonna go into it, right? Cause we way too far back. So actually I put the battery here. So this is the standard battery that I use. I have about three of these, so I charge charge them when they're when one's dead. I'll charge it. So, so this device here actually 
is made by Hobie, right? So it, it, for some reason it just fits perfect in there, right? So I, I put that back here. The only catch is now um, the wires that come back here, I had to actually splice um, longer wires from my fish finder because the one they come with really only reached the front and I'll show you in the front. So this is actually meant to go into the front of your kayak, right? Um, this is meant to go in the hatch and I'll show you how that, so you can buy this um, and it comes with a screw that goes on the back and you see there that actually goes around that pole that's in the bow of the kayak. So, or the hole of the kayak, I'm sorry. So normally what it would do is it'd sit like this and you, it, it has two screws, screws in the back and then it just mounts like that. And then your battery just sits down there in the front. So if that's the way you have it set up, then you wouldn't need to splice any um, extra wires mainly the power wire right you wouldn't have to, it, to splice the power wire to make it to, to get it all the way all the way back here with with this battery but since i never use this hatch for anything other than if i had to fix the rudder or fix the rudder cables i wouldn't use that hatch for anything so i figured i might as well get some use out of it and put a battery there and then save my front hatch for anything else that i want to put in there without without um interfering with the battery usage or you know unhooking my battery things like that so like I said, it just fits right in here, fits nicely. Um, and I think that's probably the newest idea I had or I stole from someone to actually um, use this back hatch for, which is awesome. So um, that's probably uh, any recommendation I have. That's really the best best recommendation is putting that battery back there if you have have a back hatch or something like that. Because again, you can't get to that when you're in the water unless you pull it off to the side and get out, right? So really good use of that compartment. Um, that same circular hatch I already had on there, it came with it and it came with a circular hatch up front or in the middle. But I, like I said, I replaced it with the square hatch. So um, the last thing really is just the, um, the fish finder. I happen to have the Lowrance hook reveal, as you've seen on some of my videos. Um, you could either put this on, on the right side here or you can put it over here. And as you can see, um, you know, you just unscrew these, they have grommets in here and they actually give you replacement grommets to fit the wires as they go through there. So I found this to be very, very, very simple. Right, you got the, the grommets and just the wires go through here. You can shorten them up and lengthen them. And again, you can access those through the hatch if you need it for, to for anything. And then actually the transducer, uh, take this off here. Uh, the transducer is actually right there underneath the seat. So um, it, that goes in there. The, again, it had the grommets there and that goes right underneath into the hole of the kayak. And then you can just hook it up there. So, um, that's kind of the basic layout of my kayak. Um, you know, look online, you'll see other videos that could give you different ideas of how you want to approach it. Um, but this is the setup for my 2018 Hobie kayak. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions, please comment below and um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed.